October of 2011, I found a small lump and I went to get it checked out and um, turned out it was one of four tumors I had and it was stage three breast cancer. You break down. I mean, everyone has that moment when you hear that word that, you know, I'm sorry, it's cancer, it's all cancer. And you just, you break down and you don't, you don't know. There's so many unknowns. You don't know what to expect. You don't know how far along it is. You don't know if it's spread. Um, you just don't know. Two weeks later, I opted for a bilateral mastectomy. Uh, started chemo at the end of December, finished in April, and then I had radiation from end of April till the end of June. I had my surgery and I developed an infection and um, thought we had taken care of it. A month later, it came back and I was hospitalized. They admitted me to try and treat their infection. We didn't really know how bad it was. They were trying to take care of it without having to do surgery. And then I found out that I had to have surgery again and it was just, it was pretty hard to, to take when you think you're done after dealing with it for almost a year. I was laying there and when I got admitted, when I was admitted, it was dark outside. Well, the next morning I wake up and I look out the window and I notice that I have a perfect view of the pink steel. And I took a picture of it and I posted it on, on Facebook and it's like, yep, you know, it's, it's a good reminder that it's a hard fight, but strong as steel, you're going to make it. It was a great view to have out, the, out of my window when, you know, you're, you're feeling down and you see something like that, you know, it just brings you, it lifts you up. In 2005, my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer at the age of 24. Work on a project like the Springfield Clinic First Building uh, gives me an opportunity to uh, fight cancer in another way. Uh, I take a lot of pride in that uh, and you know, being able to provide a facility that will uh, help others with cancer treatment. This one's a little bit more special. It's got a little bit more out in the community and with the pink steel event that they had. You know, you saw the turnout for that and it's just, it shows you how important this is. It's touched all of us in one way or another, and, and this, especially them seeing all the people here that signed the beam, and, and we've all lost somebody. I, I, you know, everybody thinks about it, yeah. I've got a friend that receives treatment across the street, and he's already told me that his doctor's moving over here. So he's looking forward to seeing what the building's going to look like. The goal is to create an environment for people that have been given a devastating um, twist without their permission. Um, to come in and feel as though they're wrapped in the arms of healing. And that's exactly what we've tried to create. Yes, it's a place where they're coming for treatment, but when they come, we want them to feel, um, feel healing and, and the love and the caring that we have for them and the goal to, to heal them. This is going to be a place that is going to embrace, at one time or another, your family, your spouse, maybe your children and it will last for years and years to come. It's a labor of love. There are so many women out there that are excited about this building and excited about what it's gonna provide. And um, you know, to everyone that's working hard on it, I mean, I hope that, hope that they feel that love too because it's, it's pretty important to us and, and it means a lot. I hope they take a lot of pride in their work and realize what they're providing the community. It's, it's hope, it, uh, it provides people hope. <laughs>